Hello everyone. Today we will discuss the normal cardiac MR anatomy as seen on the standard cardiac MR imaging planes. We are all quite familiar with the cardiac or the mediastinal anatomy on the axial plane because we routinely see it on the CD chest. However, when it comes to cardiac MR, axial acquisition is obtained solely for the purpose of planning standard cardiac MR imaging planes. This we have discussed in the previous session. Let us first look at the four chamber view or the horizontal long axis view. In this view, we can see the four chambers of the heart. The ones on the right side are the right atrium, right ventricle. The ones on the left side are the left atrium and left ventricle. We can identify the ventricles based on the thickness of the LV myocardium. Of course, the myocardial lining is thicker for the LV as compared to the RV where the wall is sort of paper thin. The RV also shows the presence of the moderator band towards the apex. We can also look at the mitral valve and the tricuspid valve and assess for any valvular pathology. This is the same cine loop I had shown in the previous session and inquired what is the pathology seen on this view. Let me tell you what it is. What we can see is a flow jet or a signal void which is entering into the left atrium during the ventricular systole. This is nothing but the mitral regurgitation. That's your answer. Now let us look at the two chamber or the vertical long axis view. This view is obtained to look at the left atrium and the left ventricle. We can see the pulmonary veins draining into the left atrium. We can see the anterior and the inferior wall of the left ventricle. We can assess the wall thickness and the motion or any wall motion abnormality or the contractility of the left ventricle. We can also look at the mitral valve in between the left atrium left ventricle and look for any valvular pathology. Another important structure which might be questioned is the presence of the left atrial appendage which I have marked by the arrow and the asterisk is actually the cross section of the aortic arch with an arch vessel arising from it. Now the most important view is a short axis view which we obtain as a stack from base to apex to look at the LV wall thickness and the wall motion. The left ventricle again is seen as a complete circle with the myocardial lining which is thicker as compared to the right ventricle which is seen as half a circle. This is the short axis view. Then coming to the famous three chamber view. The three chamber view is actually obtained to look at the left ventricular outflow tract. Now let me label the structures that we are seeing. We see the left atrium draining into the left ventricle and the mitral valve in between them. We see the left ventricular outflow arising from the left ventricle and then we see the uh, aortic root. Uh, a structure to remember is the aortomitral continuity which is a fibrous connection between the aortic and the mitral valve. This is peculiar to the left side of the heart chambers. It is not seen on the right side. That is, there is no fibrous continuity between the pulmonic valve and the tricuspid valve. On the three chamber view, we can also look at a portion of the right ventricle. Now, the pathology seen on this three chamber view is aortic regurgitation with a regurgitant jet hitting on the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve. That's the answer to the second question. I've put up the three chamber view again to depict the systolic anterior motion in a patient with a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. In this first video or the first cine, cine loop where we see severe left ventricular outflow tract narrowing because of the systolic anterior motion of the mitral leaflet and the basal septal hypertrophy, we can also see flow acceleration in the region of the LVOT. The second patient again has hypertrophic cardiomyopathy with basal septal hypertrophy but there is no SAM and there is no LVOT narrowing or obstruction. Again I re-emphasize that the systolic anterior motion of the mitral leaflet is a poor prognostic indicator for the patient with the patients being prone for sudden cardiac death in case of SAM and LVOT obstruction. Now let me introduce you to another view that is the left ventricular outflow tract view. This is nothing but a coronal section through the heart which shows the aortic root well. We can look at the annular plane, the aortic valve, the sinus of Valsalva, the sinotibular junction, the ascending aorta and the aortic arch partially with the arch vessels arising from it. And the second view that I am introducing is the right ventricular outflow tract view. We can see the pulmonary artery arising from the right ventricle. Now there is something abnormal that is going on with this patient. 
look at it and I'll tell you about it in my next session. Thank you.